From our previous discussion, we agreed that as a business, you need to have a list of all your assets. Now, what are those assets? And what are the assets that is usually available? And what is the asset that you need to do it yourself? So if you go to any organization, you will find that they usually have a list of all the physical assets, things like computers or, or laptop, shares, table, cables, switches, all those are listed in assets. And sometimes it's under the, it's managed by the finance department because they need to know how much they spend on that. Sometimes they have an asset department and so on. But the weakness is usually in organizations, they don't have an information asset list. And this is what I'm going to show you in the next lecture. And if you go to any, or if you get hired anywhere, this is one of the main lists that you need to make sure is there. Because if you get any re audit or any uh, compliance audit or uh, legal audit, they will ask you for that. Because the information, as I explained in the previous lecture, is your main assets as a business, right? Think about banks, for instance. How much is their information worth? Can they afford to lose any of those information? If you have a bank account and you lost it, is it acceptable? Can you take a legal action against the bank uh, because of that? Is anyone going to trust the bank to open an account if you lose one customer information? It's quite important right? Military or government, what is their information and how much it worth and so on. So in general, before showing you how to create the asset list, which is a very important document in the organization, and you are not the one who is filling it, by the way, the information asset list or the information asset register is usually filled by department. You are just making sure that they are filling it right. So if anything gets lost, you will be knowing who's responsible and who is not. So in any organization, what kind of assets they have? They have hardware, they have software, they have data asset, physical system, documentation. ITEM or IT asset management is to manage the life cycle of those assets, to have a list where you are writing down all this information. By the way, here, we are talking about anything that hold assets. So if you have an external hard drive that include a lot of files and documents, this is an asset. If you have an application or a database that hold customer information, it's an asset and so on and so forth. So you need to have a list that have all those asset information, which I'm going to show you in the next lecture. And you need to write down the uh, uh, cost uh, and also you need to identify the ownership of the asset. Now, this point is very important, and let me have your attention on that. Any asset list, as we're going to see, will have the name of the asset, but also you should include the owner of the asset and the custodian of the asset. What's it, what is the difference between owner and custodian? So, for instance, if you are working in an insurance company and you have a list of all this customer information or all the customer information of this company okay which is very important because if someone was able to steal this list and sell it to a competitor he will know your customer and what deal you are giving them and maybe he can give better deal and steal all your customer so as an asset it's quite important just an excel sheet that include all their contacts their financial details uh, finance details their uh, their uh, contact information and so on Okay, who's the owner of this file? It's an Excel sheet. Is it you? Maybe you are the one who created, but are you the owner? Let me ask you this question. If you leave the company, do you have the right to take this file with you? Definitely not. That means the owner is not you. Even if you are not, if you are the one who are creating, the, who created this file, you still are not the owner. The owner, in most of the cases, is the company, right? While what do you call yourself? You are the custodian. You are the one who are managing this file. So most of the time, the owner will be the department, will be the company, but the custodian is the one who is managing this file, who modifying, who decides the importance of the file, who decides the classification. But he's not the owner in the in a sense that he do not have the right 
to take the file if he leaves this company and go to another company. So very important to understand between the difference between owner and custodian. And it will be very useful if in the sheet that we're going to create in the next lecture, beside identifying or writing down all the assets that you have, also you need to identify the owner of the assets and the custodian. Custodian means the person who is managing the asset. In, in case something went wrong or a file get lost, who are you going to call or who are you going to like uh, uh, talk to? Who's responsible? While the owner, most of the time, it will be the department or it will be the company or it could be the CEO, the senior management and so on. Uh, also, according to the list, you're going to implement the security control to protect those data. So, for instance, if you have a list of all important files that represent report or a budget or a payroll, okay, according to that, because it's written in the file that those are confidential data, you're going to decide how I'm going to secure them. Do I need to encrypt the drive? Do I need to assign a password on them? So, having an information asset register will help you uh, identify what need to have security and what not. Maybe in the list you have a document like uh, a brochure. You have uh, like a brochure template on your uh, computer or maybe some, some advertising document. They are not that quite important. If you lost them, it will not affect your business. It will not affect your reputation and so on. Okay. So it, having this list will help you to do that. So, I want you not just to take the knowledge from this domain, but I want you to create an information asset list yourself. Okay. Uh, it's important to apply classification, as you're going to see, according to the sensitivity of data. So it's not just, just writing down the list of information and list of software and list of data that you have in a list, but also you need to classify them. You need to identify the owner and custodian. Uh, very be very clear about the regulation uh, uh, policy requirement and about the legal as well. What do we mean by that? Let me give you a small example, which is very, very important, right? Logs, any application or any software or any computer, they have logs, right? And in one of the lectures, I'm going to show you how to check the computer logs. If you have a surveillance cam, for instance, in your company, they are keeping video, they are recording video, right? How long those logs or those video, you should keep them? Should I keep them uh, for one month? Should I keep them for one day? I mean, I'm, I'm recording those surveillance video and I keep them in some storage in my company or I'm, I'm capturing logs from my system and I keep them. How long should I keep them? What do you think? Should I keep them for two days, for one week, for one year? Because I cannot say I will keep them forever because it will take storage. And by keeping all those recording or all those logs, you know, it's an endless process. So you have to keep them for a, for a time uh, or a, for a, 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 like a period of time and then get rid of them. Okay. Let's assume that you decided to keep them from for one week. Because you checked and you don't have enough storage. So you decided to keep all those recording and all those logs for one week. And then a robbery happened to your bank or someone steals something or someone like hacked to the company network and steal critical information. You're going to inform law enforcement and then law enforcement will come and ask you, where is the video recording? Okay, it happened after two or three weeks. What are you going to tell them? I only kept them for one week. Or the logs, I, I used to override the logs every one week. This is not right. You're going to face legal problem because of that. Okay. So we need to know about the legal because it's different from one country to another. And it's different that if you are working in a government, different than if you are working in a private sector. So one thing you need to do before starting creating those asset lists and starting managing them is to contact the legal department. Guys, could you let me know? How long should I keep the logs? How long should I keep the information? How long should I keep even the information of this uh, organization? The documents, the list, how long should I keep it according to the law? And you should follow that. But saying that I didn't knew, this is not an excuse. Usually, this kind of jobs, information security officer or consulting or specialist, 
they are getting paid very well, but they have a legal responsibility. So you need to check with legal department first. What is the regulation? How long should I keep the assets? And so on. Now, after having this discussion about the information asset list or asset management, let me show you how to create one. And I'm going to ask you for small practice to create your own information assets. And then uh, we're going to evaluate it together.